To be able to test your iOS applications on Windows, you will have to do a bit more than on Mac and for the case of Android. For the case of Android, just like on Mac, you can just make sure that the Android project is selected from this drop-down, that you have selected debug and select one of the emulators. At least you should have one by default in here. But for iOS, you will have to do a bit more things. Like I mentioned in the previous lecture, what you actually need is for your Visual Studio on your Windows computer to connect to a Mac host. So that is why you need a Mac computer. I briefly mentioned that you could use MacInCloud.com if you do not have access to any Mac computer whatsoever. That way you can just test your iOS applications. So let's go ahead and test this out. I will have to navigate over to tools first and foremost, go to options and in here find the Xamarin options and the iOS settings. Notice that in here you have the ability to pair to a Mac computer. So I will go ahead and pair to my Mac computer. By the way, by default, your Mac computer is not ready for you to do this. So you will have to do these three steps. And in fact, since I'm on my computer right here, I can search for remote login here on the sharing folder. And once I am here, let me actually take a look at the second step which is for you to go over to remote login, which I have right here and enable it. So I can see that it is on. And right now I'm allowing this to all users. You could also restrict who can remote login and just hit on next. And notice that here I find my Mac computer. I can hit on connect and I can write the username and password that I use to log in to my Mac computer. And my Visual Studio is going to go ahead and make a connection to my Mac computer host, which by the way, can only happen because my Mac computer already installed all of my Xamarin tools. So because my Mac computer already installed Visual Studio in the Mac computer, this connection can happen. If you have an installed Visual Studio on the Mac that you want to connect to, you have to do that first. But notice that now that I am connected, I can just close this. Notice that back here on the options, I see a colorful icon in here, which means that we are connected. And now what I can do is select iOS. And because I am connected, I will now be able to find all of these simulators. And in fact, I could also now from Windows take a look at the designer for iOS as well, because now my Windows computer or Visual Studio on Windows is connected to the Mac. And also, by the way, back in the tools, options, iOS settings, you could remote the simulator to Windows, which I'm going to leave selected for you to notice a, a bit of a difference in here. So I am going to run this. In this case, I'm going to be using the iPhone 8 simulator. But I want you to notice a small difference in here. Uh, by the way, if you do not select that option to remote the simulator to Windows, the simulator would open on the Mac computer, just as if we were running it from Visual Studio on Mac. But because I selected these to be remoted to Windows, after a few seconds, we should see the simulator start on my Windows computer. The simulator is still fully running on the Mac. We absolutely need the Mac for this. This is not actually running on Windows, but Visual Studio has this tool notice that will allow the simulator to be displayed here on Windows. Some very interesting wizardry is going on in here because the simulator now opens in here and you can see that it is quite different to the one that we see. I mean, it's exactly the same. It just looks a bit different. But eventually you will see the same iOS simulator pop up in here or start right here. We see the application launching and after the application launches, we see the exact same interface. Of course, in here I selected the iPhone 8. 
In the previous lectures, I used the iPhone 10 simulator, but you can see how we see the new button. We see the same UI that we just saw, and we see the same back button that is absolutely necessary on iOS. So there you have it. This is how, or the steps that you have to perform to be able to test for iOS directly from a Windows computer.